Back in May of 2019, I announced to you guys that I had purchased an ErgoDox Easy programmable keyboard. It's this split keyboard design, you know, where each hand is independent. It's basically two keyboards, right, joined by a cable in the center. It's programmable, it's got mechanical switches, and it's quite expensive. And I made a video about this uh, nearly a year ago that I purchased an ErgoDox Easy. And one of the most common questions I get on the channel is, hey DT, do you still like the ErgoDox? You still using it, you still love it, would you recommend it to other people? So let me answer a few of those questions right off the bat. Yes, I'm still using the ErgoDox. <laughs> this is the ErgoDox. I've got a second camera here, a webcam capturing the ErgoDox easy. Yeah, I could change the colors too here if I wanted to do some different colors for the uh, the backlit keys here. I, I typically actually don't even have the thing lit up. I lit it up today for purposes of this video. But the ErgoDox Easy is, is just a fantastic keyboard. I've used it every day since I made that video nearly a year ago. It's been the keyboard here at my desk and I will say it is very strange to use at first. The ErgoDox, it took me about a month to get comfortable. It took me about two weeks to where I just wasn't completely fumbling around. After about a month, I was good with it. And now it's to the point, I can't imagine using any other keyboard other than the ErgoDox. Now that's not to say I can't use a traditional keyboard like on my laptop. I can actually switch between the ErgoDox and a standard keyboard pretty well. Now that, that was not the case initially. Initially, that took an adjustment period. For example, you come home and you have the ErgoDox, you go to work and you have your traditional 110 key keyboard. And there was always an adjustment period. It took me five, 10 minutes to adjust to this keyboard or to adjust to a normal keyboard when I was at work. But the more you did it, the more it became to where I could just sit down and I, I could immediately adjust to the keyboard that was in front of me. And for people that are new to the channel, maybe didn't watch that initial video about the ErgoDox, let me just briefly show you guys the ErgoDox. Now, the ErgoDox comes with this split design here. It comes in two different colors. They make a white here that's in the picture. They also make a black. I bought the black one, of course. And then, of course, you pick your mechanical switches and you can decide some extra features. Why don't we actually just configure one really quick? So if I go to, how about buy now here? And you know, we can configure basically what I bought. I bought the black, I did buy the tilt kit, I bought the wing wrist, uh, I did have the glow, which is the backlit keys, and it doesn't really matter what, uh, what switch set. I did the kale uh, silvers, I believe. Anyway, you can see the price starts adding up, right? $354 plus tax, you know, once I had it shipped, the thing is about $400, you know, with all the bells and whistles. So it is quite an expensive keyboard, you know, and that's one of the things a lot of you guys were kind of turned off about is, you know, this keyboard is expensive, right? This is not a cheap keyboard. Let me get rid of the rubber wing rest here because one of the things that, if I had a critique about this keyboard is that the keyboard is deep. So, you know, most standard desks that you have a little uh, roll out that you can put th this uh, keyboard on. Don't be surprised if it just fits. And when you add the wing rest, it gets so much deeper that you really don't have much room. Like if I put the wing rest in a comfortable position, really, I can't even see the top of the keyboard because it's up under the desk, which I mean, do you really need to see the keys? Many people don't, but sometimes, especially if I'm typing in the dark, you know, I, I want to see exactly where I'm placing my hands and I can't even see all the keys without getting rid of the wing rest and actually pulling the keyboard out. Now I mentioned that this is a programmable keyboard, so the, obviously you can map the keys to do whatever it is you want to do. And that, that's one of the great features about this keyboard because, you know, it's not a lot of keys, right? It's not a full keyboard. So you do have layers on this. So most programmable keyboards have what they call layers. And if I show you this in the web browser here, going back to the ErgoDox site, you know, you have layer zero, which is your traditional kind of QWERTY keyboard. Although there's a bunch of thumb keys on this keyboard. But the, the first layer, which they call layer zero, is your traditional keyboard. Now there is a layer one, and this is where you get into the number keypads on, on the right hand, and then some of your special symbols, especially your parentheses and your brackets. So if you're programming, you're constantly switching to layer one, but it's easy enough because the layer one key is the pinky keys by default. Now, of course, 
you can change all of this, but I left it. So typically, like if I'm bash scripting or something, you know, I just hit that left key here. And then I got all my brackets right here. I did not change this layer at all, actually. My layer one is the default layer. My, my layer zero, I did change some things. Not a lot, though. You, you know, I'm one, again, I'm one of those kinds of people that typically I try to use things as they're given to me. And I, I really tried to make the default layer zero work. The only thing I changed, I think, the arrow keys. Okay, so by default, if I go to the arrow keys, you have a left and right on this hand and then you have up and down on this hand and I did not like that I put all four on this hand here and I put them in the correct vim kind of order so you've got left down up right so it's almost like hjkl just shifted down two rows you know hjkl and then the, of course the arrow keys but it's in the exact same configuration the exact same order I thought that made a lot of sense a lot more sense than having the arrows kind of split up between the two hands that that was weird to me the other interesting thing about this keyboard is by default you've got some extra keys uh, you've got the hyper key and you got the meh key and what hyper and meh are well let me just click on hyper hyper is alt shift control plus command so it's basically uh, four keys in one you know that's the great thing about these programmable keyboards is they make impossible key bindings possible the meh key is the same as t typing alt shift plus control so uh, it makes you know adding key bindings to like your tiling window managers and stuff like that really easy you never have to worry about your key bindings conflicting with something else because you've got these hyper and meh keys that you can map and trust me they won't conflict with anything else just briefly i should talk about layer two i never use layer two on my keyboard but this is basically your mouse so if i get into layer two and let me get to my desktop here so you can actually see this in action so you see my mouse here i'm actually moving my mouse here but if i wanted to let me use the keyboard this is me using the keyboard moving my mouse because i'm on layer two and you can see how the mouse kind of speeds up as i hold it down yeah so it doesn't move across the screen at a constant rate the longer you hold it the faster it moves so this is the movement of the mouse and then this is your left click and this is your right click so, so the keyboard of course i mentioned is programmable how do you actually change the the keys the function of the keys well what i did since i'm on arch linux is i downloaded this package from the aur called teensy loader and if i go to the teensy loader website do they have a site here that i could go to yeah here is the upstream url the Teensy Loader, it basically communicates with your keyboard. Uh, it basically is this graphical application where you just you know, set the keys on the keyboard to whatever and it flashes it to the keyboard. And, and how this works is there is a hole at the top of one of the, uh, the sections here. There's a little tiny pinhole here. And all, all you do is you stick a little needle or a pin in that tiny, tiny hole there. And then that basically lets you flash the keyboard. Now, you know, that's just a little bit about the ErgoDox in general, but of course you guys have been asking my thoughts. My thoughts is the ErgoDox is the best keyboard I've ever used. Once you get used to it, I can't imagine using another keyboard. I mean, when I have to use other keyboards, it's fine. But as far as for daily use, if something happened to my ErgoDox, if for some reason it broke or, you know, I poured coffee on it and ruined it or, you know, it got stolen and run over by a car, whatever happened to this ErgoDox, I would definitely buy another one. I, I would never use another keyboard. It, this thing is just that fantastic and I know it's expensive. I mean, it's nearly $400. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Does it make you more productive i don't know if it makes you more productive i will say it is much easier on your hands because they are right the, they call it the ergo docs for being ergonomic and it is easier on your hands because of the split hand design it makes perfect sense because think about it your hands naturally on a, a typical keyboard i wish i'd brought 110 key keyboard but you know your hands are kind of tight and on the keyboard you know they're real close together where the ergo docs allows you to adjust this thing however you can get your hands shoulder width apart you know where it's it's really kind of comfortable not to mention it's ergodynamic you have the little tilt wrist i can adjust you know the uh, 
front and back positions of the keyboard and then of course you've got the little rubber wing rests which I do use a lot of people don't use most people probably won't use the wing rest I actually like it I find it very comfortable I find it very easy on my wrist let me switch to the desktop let me show you oh, a little bit of me typing on the ergo docs let me zoom in here I'll get into insert mode here in Vim this is a line of text all right, and then let me backspace and <laughs> start something else. Actually, that that brings up an interesting point I, I forgot to show you guys is what's a little weird initially with the keyboard for those of you that want to try this out is the thumb keys. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six thumb keys for each thumb. You know, the thumb is responsible for these six keys. Each thumb has six keys and the space key is right here and the backspace is right here. And those are the two most common keys you're going to hit, right? Because when you're typing, you're constantly spacing between words, right? And of course, you're going to make mistakes. I don't care who you are. You make a lot of typing mistakes. What's the thing you do? The, the second most other than space is backspace. And they're right there for that thumb. And when you first switch to the ergo docs, I am not going to lie. You are going to be hitting backspace when you you think you're hitting space and you're going to be hitting space when you think you're hitting backspace. And if you're not paying attention to what's typing on the screen, maybe you're not looking at the screen, maybe you're looking off or whatever, and then you look up at the, the page you're typing and it's just a jumbled mess. It's because you were hitting backspace a lot when you were supposed to be hitting space. Uh, that took really a couple of months for me to get comfortable with that. I don't do that very often. Now, sometimes I accidentally start hitting sp backspace instead of space, but uh, those first couple of months especially, that happened quite often. And of course, the same thing happens on the other thumb, although the other thumb, it's not that serious of a situation. You have the enter key, you know, on this thumb, and the, the one right behind it is tab. So accidentally hitting the tab key is not quite as egregious as accidentally hitting the backspace key. And of course, depending on what kind of ap application you're running, most graphical applications, the backspace key also has a secondary function of delete. So if you're like in your file manager or something, you accidentally hit the backspace, you know, it's going to prompt you, hey, do you really want to delete this file? Uh, no. <laughs> So I guess the takeaway from this video really is, you know, my grade of the Ergo Docs easy. If I was giving it a letter grade, I'd give it an A+. Plus. I mean, it's just a home run. Would I recommend you guys to buy an Ergo Docs? Yes. If you are looking for an ergonomic keyboard and if you're looking for a programmable keyboard, absolutely. You are not wasting your money. I can tell you it's an expensive keyboard, but I'm telling you right now, you're going to love this keyboard. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few people. I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Chris, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Lambda, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie, the producers of the show. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, all these names that you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because you guys, the community, you guys sponsor this show. Without you guys... The show wouldn't be possible. The channel wouldn't be possible. I want to sincerely thank all of my supporters. If you'd like to support the channel, you'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.